experience. Well, welcome everybody to the experience podcast where we discuss fitness industry trends and host industry experts with invaluable insights uh, all around the topic of the member experience. Um, my name is Darren Allen, and I'm here with my co-host, Nick Thornton. And today we're hosting industry icon, Jeff Dyer. And, and if you don't know Jeff, you should. Uh, Jeff is the founder and president of three amazing brands, uh, Lifestyle Family Fitness, uh, Aussie Fit. And then now he's with one of the, he's the one of the largest franchisees in the crunch fitness business with over 40 locations and growing. And, uh, oh, along the way, he was also uh, president, chairman, and chairman of the board for URSA. And he's just one of the nicest, most giving people in the history of the fitness industry. And I just am so thankful to have you here with us, Jeff, uh, Jeff, today. I just really, really thankful to have you on the, on the podcast with us today. Thank you, Darren, and uh, congratulations to you for all that you've done for the industry and uh, your recent recognition for being the leading uh, CRM platform at Ursa. Uh, that was a great uh, reward mm -hmm. award for you, and uh, thank you for everything you've done to make uh, life better for us as well. Well, thank you. That's fantastic, both of you. It's 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 fun to, in a way, get to ride on the coattails of this conversation, Jeff, with Darren. Um, and it was interesting. Darren and I were chatting the other day. And he says, oh, we're, we've got to talk to Jeff Dyer. And he's like, Nick, you got to meet this guy. And so when he, we and I were sitting down yesterday, we're like, how do we how do we really introduce Jeff to this? I said, you know, what's really important is how did you and, and Darren really start getting to know one another? And what was that thing that caused you all to begin to work together back in the day? Yeah, well, uh, I think we met in the late 90s, Darren. I don't know if you remember the year exactly, but I know that I had Lifestyle Family Fitness back then, and we had about seven or eight clubs back in the 1996-98 era. We converted to month-to-month uh, -month memberships. Kevin LaFerria joined the team back uh, around that time, and uh, Pete Cosentino joined shortly thereafter. And I ran into your platform at an Ursa trade show, and uh, you had uh, the VFP um, a platform where you had the avatar and uh, all the little buttons and that you could press and based on, you know, if you looked, uh, you had this body type at this particular t stage of your life and you worked out two times a week or three times a week and changed your dietary habits, etc. You could look like this young lady at the end and uh, we used that platform to drive personal training sales and uh, we were record setting back then and uh, you were um, a big part of the success that we had at Lifestyle with personal training. Uh, and of course, we had the videos that were attached to that that uh, you and I have talked about before. And we had uh, tremendous testimonials that we were able to deliver to prospects. And uh, it was a game changer for us. And I think you used that as a catalyst to, to drive your company's growth early on. Is that correct? Absolutely, uh, it is. And, and then I also, Jeff, I don't know if you remember, I'm sure you do, but we were at the uh, the very first Cybec event in New Orleans as well, and uh, I remember going. and There was a big boxing match that one night, and we went out to that. We had the the uh, the big uh, event with Cybec. It was just a lot of fun, and and uh, but yeah, we 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 leveraged um, that opportunity that you gave us at Lifestyle Family Fitness, and and. Uh, many different new brands uh, since then. So it was a catalyst for us, for sure. No, I was going to say, we've, uh, we've both been very, very active in the industry uh, because that's how Darren uh, is able to establish relationships by being active in the fitness industry, yeah. and uh, as have I. And I think we've enjoyed that uh, growth that we've uh, both had uh, separately. Uh, Darren's been able to transform VFP to uh, its current platform, a digital uh, CRM program. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get involved with Crunch Fitness about five years ago. And, uh, and there's Darren front and center uh, uh, with his platform, introducing it to Craig Pepp and Donat. And we were one of the first adopters of, uh, of VFP Next. And uh, it was, it's been a game changer for us. It's absolutely the, uh, the backbone of our, of our platform. We wouldn't be the number one performing franchisee for Crunch if we, did, if we didn't embrace all the bells and whistles that VFP Next offers. 
Yeah, it was interesting that you bring that up because I was asking Darren, I said, how did you come around and say, hey, we've going from all the body scans and doing these things with member and Darren walks in, he says, I have this new idea. It's called a digital guest register. When you first heard him say, like, how do those two things connect? Did your mind kind of get a little twisted on that a little bit? Well, you know, if, if anyone is successful in the fitness business, everything starts at that member, that guest check-in uh, yeah. station at the desk. And even when I talk at OSA conferences now, I ask, you know, how many people in the room are using a paper guest register? It still amazes me that right. a lot of operators still track their number one, uh, your number one asset is the prospect's uh, name, cell phone number, and email address. And uh, when you don't capture that digitally, you're prone to a lot of errors, uh, transcription mm -hmm. problems, and uh, and permission problems. So uh, yeah, when, when the opportunity to have the digital guest register came about, um, we embraced it right from the very beginning. As soon as we started using it, we noticed that we were getting a lot more guests registered than uh, were being recorded manually because people that are working mm -hmm. in the gyms didn't want to be criticized for not closing all their prospects. But when you capture everything digitally and it's mandatory in our company that everyone has to register through the, the BFP digital guest register, uh, we were able to capture uh, more accurate emails and uh, had permission to text text the uh, members. And uh, it's been a game changer for us. No, that's amazing. I heard two things there. It's, 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 I guess it's, it's being more thorough and having the right data, accurate data. And then also it's accountability. And I know those things are often hard things to pull together for clubs. I was in a club, not the thing was two weeks ago and I, they were taking their registrations through paper and it, it, it is interesting to your point that you've really got to move past that if you're really going to see the velocity that you need um, on your growth. Um, really interesting. Darren, I guess from your perspective, you know, you, you transitioned from that digital, you know, thinking of the how do we make people more healthy through, you know, exercise routines to being on that front end. I guess in your thoughts, you know, in working with, with Jeff, how did you leverage yourself into um, crunch and really making this a win for both teams, both both companies, really? Well, that, that's a great question. And Jeff, you mentioned Craig Pepin to not, and uh, I got to give a huge amount of credit to Craig because he had this uh, idea that he wanted the guest experience to be a lot more like uh, sort of like an Apple store experience, mm -hmm. if you will, get away from paper get away from, you know, losing uh, little pieces of paper and post-it notes, that sort of stuff, and having it on an iPad. And, you know, I've known Craig for a long time. And, and when he came to me and, and said, hey, Darren, can you do this? You know, I, I said, absolutely. He said, well, I, are you sure, Darren? I, you know, you're, I, I, I trust you, but um, I, I need to know that you can execute on this. And so we did. And uh, then obviously a, a big part of it too was getting input and feedback from amazing operators like, like Jeff and his group uh, mm. working with his team there as partner Vince, Julian. Uh, so all those guys. And then there are some other crunch franchisees that uh, helped push us forward. Um, but having that support and, and that original vision was important. But then having the team just really grind through every um, possible experience um, that a guest is going to have and make it mm -hmm. really frictionless. That was really our goal. How, how can we make this experience for a lead coming in as a prospect into the club? How can we make that as frictionless as possible? Yeah. So, so we, we jump in and Jeff, this is something that we ask all of our guests on, on our, on our podcast series. And it's really, you know, when we say the word, the member experience, what does that really, in, in essence, mean to you when you think about working with your clubs and your groups? What does that mean to you in your own words? Well, let's take a club that uh, we haven't built yet. So, you know, for us, uh, it's, it's there is not a lot of selling involved in the business. It's more about lead generation. That is the, right. the basis of what we do. We try to create prospects that we can constantly market to until they convert and become a member and once they become a member, then you want them to buy personal training, get engaged in all the different activities the club has to offer. But when we're building a club, the first objective for us is to get out there in the community 
uh, mm -hmm. with a you know, community outreach and capture uh, prospective names, people that are interested in possibly the gym that's coming soon. So whether we're using an iPhone with uh, VFP Next uh, as the app or whether we're using a, uh, an iPad, um, obviously we don't have a physical plant yet. We're in a new city. We haven't mm -hmm. built the club. So we're out there capturing leads. And we do that for a, a solid couple of months. And then mm -hmm. um, about 45 days before the clubs open, we invite people people to join and uh, we know exactly what uh, percentage of those members will those prospects will convert to a sale and uh, we have an objective by the time the club opens that uh, we have a minimum threshold of number of members that we want to enroll I won't share those those numbers with you but uh, the VFP next platform is the basis of everything we do um, once the once the club is open we've started to convert those prospects through email blasts through text blasts through uh, regular messaging. Uh, uh, and then once they become a member, we have a whole series of drip campaigns that invite members to refer a friend, invite members to join our corporate program, mm. invite members to do group fitness or hit zone training or participate in hot yoga. All the different components of what we have is on autopilot through VFP Next, both on an email campaign uh, and also on a text campaign. Yeah, All those things work. And then we set up a monthly marketing planner and uh, we have about four or five flash sales a month and uh, we use VFP Next uh, as, a, as a delivery mechanism for, for that. Now, bear in mind, we couldn't do any of this messaging if we didn't have the permission of the prospect. Yeah. And uh, we've had a handful of lawsuits that we've had over the five years that we've used VFP Next and uh, people say that we texted them uh, without authorization and sure enough, Darren's team will pull up the verification that they gave permission <laughs> for that and, uh, and we're able to defeat the uh, any kind of yeah. action ever made. The other part of it is that uh, is a hidden a gem is the fact that everyone's signing a, a liability waiver. So if we have a slip and fall, back in the day, you know, we had a paper guest register. You had to go through all these files to try to find a wow. waiver because a prospect, uh, you, you, you lose their signature. With the digital guest register, we've got permission uh, uh, or pardon me, they've waived their uh, right to a class action suit or different things of that nature. So um, big fan of VFP Next and the digital guest register. The other part of it with, with respect to lead generation, we uh, rely on a lot of referrals, just like the industry has mm -hmm. for as long as I've been in the business. And uh, we still ask for the names of friends that uh, are interested in joining. We use Promotion Vault. Uh, we push those leads onto a landing page. They give us permission to email them and text them. Now they're back into VFP Next. So all of our lead gen goes through VFP Next and they get on uh, the drip campaigns, the marketing campaigns. That's what works for us. It's a game changer. Yeah, it's interesting so, too. It's like each member is or, or guest or and or prospect are in a different point of that journey. And um, it's one thing that we were really impressed with VFP um, when I started working with Darren is like really thinking through each of those stages. They're not one and done. Well, we got them in the door. They're good. It's, it, it then continues on that journey to figure out where they are, even to the exit. And then how do you put them back to the beginning and bring them back through to rejoin? And you know, just hearing some of the statistics around how well Crunch overall has done through the pandemic is very impressive. And I wonder how much of that is just having the right tooling and mechanisms to be able to achieve that. And it's uh, fun to be able to say we partner with you, Jeff, and 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 doing all these things. Um, Darren, I know for you, it's like uh, this has been also a journey for VFP and and how you've invested in and really Crunch for a couple of years to get this right. Maybe you can just share briefly on that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I just mentioned earlier that, you know, Craig Pepinot had the had the vision, but I think it's also the support that we've had from so many of the different franchisees. I know Asaf Gall early on uh, was also a big uh, supporter, just like Jeff uh, was and his team. Yeah. And uh, but I do believe that a real key here for us is that we we view uh, and we viewed certainly viewed Crunch as a just a true partner. Yeah. And so every single day we have the mentality that we're going to roll up our sleeves. We're going to get to work and we're going to partner with them no matter what comes. Um, and so, you know, obviously there are things, challenges that come up. And, and that's one of the reasons why I just really appreciate Jeff so much is that when a challenge comes, um, he's like, hey, Darren, how, how can we? solve this together 
Yeah. Um, and in that true partnership, we work it out and figure out a solution and then it makes everything better. And then we pass that on to the rest of the industry. So Jeff, um, when we, as we sort of start to wrap up here today, I know one of the reasons that you've been in the business for so long uh, is you, you want to help change people's lives. Um, so uh, I don't know, I'm, I may be putting you on the spot here just a little bit, but uh, do you, can you recall uh, any, any stories or any uh, time when you sort of made a big difference uh, in somebody's life through all the thousands, hundreds of thousands of members that have been, that have joined your clubs over time? Yeah, well, before I got uh, involved with uh, Lifestyle, I saw about 10,000 members. And there's definitely a lot of stories about uh, <laughs> the person that was hesitant to make a decision to join, and then you convince them that they should. Then they come back and tell you that you changed, you changed my life. There's a lot of those stories. But I think the best story is my own. I used to be a, an obese uh, teenager at the age of 18, uh, and uh, I weighed about 260 pounds at the time. And uh, I ended up joining a gym in Australia at the age of 18 and uh, with a buddy, and we shredded that weight off in uh, 90 days, and it changed my life. And uh, I went from a, um, you know, a socially uh, uh, intimate, you know, I, I was a shy guy, and it basically changed my life and changed my personality and made me realize how much better life is when you lead a healthy lifestyle. So that's probably my best uh, change story. But there's many, many, obviously, when you're dealing with people every day, there's a lot of people walk up to you and say, this is a game changer. And uh, it's a great business to be in. I, I like that statistic from LA Fitness where they say that uh, they recognize that uh, every member can have three memberships in their lifetime. So when you look at a member, it's not mm -hmm. the two years they're joining for. You know, our average life of a member is about 26 months. But if they join three times, a member is really a member for about six or seven years. And that's a lot of time out of someone's life that we're engaged with them as a member in our club. So interesting. Jeff, I just love that story. And I hope that so many people can listen to this and just, just realize, right? Like you had that personal moment you changed your life uh, for really forever, forever. Yeah. And then that inspiration, yeah. you now opened so many clubs and changed so many other lives. Uh, it just shows you that if you have the right perspective in life and you have a, a focus and a goal, you can make such a huge difference and impact so many lives. And man, what an awesome story. I, I appreciate you sharing that. Thanks, sir. And thank you, Nick. Appreciate you putting this together. Thank you for joining us for the experience. Check back next time for another episode on how to take your club to the next level. For more content and to stay up to date with the experience, follow Club Automation, VFP Next, and Motionsoft on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. We'll see you next time.